what they showed in Mr. Robot is once again realistic, but like you always say, it's the time frames, right, that are not realistic. Yeah, this is it's very realistic. It's been done. Um, there's a lot of research into these devices. Some of that research has been published. You can find the research and be able to do it yourself, but it's time consuming, but somebody's already done it. And so it can be done. Um, the guys who originally did this at Black Hat were um, ISEC partners did it uh, and they did it like 2011. So this would have been available to Elliot when the show was made in 2014, yeah. 2015. So he would have had this kind of research already available to him to be able to hack the femto cell. And it was also was a, in the show that shows that he is actually using, he's building a, a browser exploit that was well known at that time. It came out like in 2014 that he's building in the show in Ruby. If you watch closely, he's, he's building an exploit in Ruby to be able to put into the femto cell to then be able to place the exploit onto everybody's phone who connects to it. That's great. And I mean, the device that you're building, is that using like HackRF or some kind of software-defined radio like that? Well, the, the device that we're working on is actually a Stingray, right? A Stingray-like device that actually is using Lime SDR, right? So the HackRF is a nice piece of hardware that can do a lot of things, but it can only go, it's only half duplex, okay? So yeah. it can't go in both directions. It also is relatively slow, it's half duplex. It only uses USB 2, not USB 3, and it's relatively slow. So we're building with a Lime SDR, which is a lot faster. It's full duplex. It can go USB 3, what have you. So it has a lot of the capabilities, basically enhanced capabilities of like the HackRF. The HackRF is a nice hobbyist and a learning tool. But when you start getting into like serious projects, you got to take a bump up to these little bit more powerful pieces of hardware and a little bit more expensive. I like to ask the sort of the beginner questions or the dumb questions for lack of a better word. The femtocell is connecting, uh, sorry, it's using cell phone uh, frequencies. So the phone connects via typical cell phone connections to the femtocell. And then it's so connecting the, via IP. Yeah, sorry, go on. Right, exactly. So here's, here's the, you here have the cell phone. It's connecting to the femtocell. The femtocell then via ethernet is connecting to the broadband gateway. The gateway then is going via IP, okay, out to the internet to the radio network controller and the whole network of the the uh, mobile carrier. Now the the backhaul on these femto cells is varying. Some of them are private networks and some of them simply use the public internet. So it varies by carrier, but really it's not that important to us because what we're doing is we're intercepting right here at this at this stage right here. We're inside this device. But there are some people who've worked on trying to intercept this traffic in here. And of course, the when we start talking about building a stingray, essentially what we're doing is building this, this whole tower right here with the BTS. They call the macro cell BTS. You're building a cell tower with a, an entire cell phone transmission unit. My question was, couldn't you run a sniffer between the femtocell and the gateway, like in that diagram. So it's got broadband access. Could you like sniff the traffic or is it all encrypted? Well, it's all encrypted from here to here. So that's what, okay. actually, it, that's that's part of the problem that you run into is that one, this is all encrypted. And so you have to get it, you have to intercept the traffic before it gets before encrypted. It gets yeah. encrypted. Yeah. And so yeah, that's the whole, that's why you need to go ahead and change the the Linux kernel inside that device. Because as it's built, it's encrypting it as soon as it hits the, the kernel and you can't get it before it gets encrypted. So that's why Elliot changes the kernel. Okay, that's why he uses OpenWRT to change the Linux kernel before it gets encrypted. And then once he has that, he can see all the traffic. It's interesting in the UK, I don't know if it's the same in the US, in the UK carriers allow you to make calls on your Wi-Fi. So if, you, if you've got no cell phone reception, but like your home broadband is there, it'll just jump onto the home broadband. broadband. So you just right. make calls and receive calls on on your Wi-Fi. Is it similar in the US? Yeah, in the US you can do, you can make a, you can make calls on the Wi-Fi here as well. So the same problem there, if it, the, the traffic's encrypted, that's why you can't sniff it, right? Yeah, the traffic's encrypted there. So they're, they're mostly in most of the carriers now, especially when you get to 4G, when you're talking about 2G and 3G, 
the authentication and encryption is very weak. Right? When you get to 4G okay. and 5G, it gets much stronger and it's harder to break. Actually, these femto cells are using 3G. So they're a little bit slower than regular traffic, but this is a, this is for people who don't have any traffic in their area. If you're no cell in their area, if you're making phone wouldn't even notice the difference between 3G yeah. and 4G, but it's only when you're sending you know, you're sending data traffic through that you'll notice the difference. But for regular cell calls, you won't notice the difference at all. You know, I think I I, I kind of missed it. So I think we should emphasize that you, if you, with that femto cell, you can uh, eavesdrop on SMSs, it's typical like cellular phone calls, but also the internet traffic that would typically go across like 4G or 3G. Is that right? Yes. So you can get the, the internet traffic is unencrypted at the femto cell. The SMS is encrypted, but it can be decrypted and the voice traffic can be uh, decrypted as well. And this was demonstrated, like you said, at Black Hat 2011, right? I think it was uh, first shown. There's been a number of researchers who have worked on it. The folks at ISEC Partners demonstrated it at Black Hat 2011, and then somebody else did it in 2010. And then there's been a, a number of researchers who have continued this research in recent years. Uh, there's a fellow in China who's been doing, you know, he's been tearing apart all these femto cells around the world. And and basically he says, they're all, they're all vulnerable to being hacked, right? And so, wow. but... The hack is going to be different via, depending on what femto cell you're using. This is we're just in this case we're just talking about this one. That's probably the most widely used in the United States. You know, Verizon has about one third of all the, the mobile customers in the U.S. And this is the product that they're still selling that they use for people who are in dead zones of cellular the cellular network. And the new ones, they say that you can't get root access. So if you can't get root access, you can't obviously flash. The, the Linux kernel, you know, there's always a way, right? There's always a way. You, <laughs> there's always a way. So they've made it harder, but there's still always a way. And then, you know, how you're going to get root access on the others is going to vary by the, the, the company who manufactures it and the carrier who's carrying it.